Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Hema Pandemic live stream class. Today we're going to do a little more work on the saber. One of the things I want to do today, what I want to focus on, is cutting mechanics with the saber. There are lots of videos on cutting. There are lots of videos on uh, practicing drills. But there are very few actions where you combine the two. And obviously, these are not sharp swords. We are not doing this with sharp swords. Not only is that dangerous, it's dumb. Uh, and, but what I want to focus on is that when you are doing drills, when you're practicing, you work very cleanly in your drills. However, when you go to cutting, it's very common for people to lose their technique because they're so focused on the cutting action. So what I want to focus today is on cutting mechanics with the saber when the target cuts back. And it's an important thing to remember that just because I can cut my opponent does not mean that he's not going to cut me as well. So I need to make sure that all my cutting mechanics maintain my safety in the process of creating an offensive action against my opponent. We have some drills for that, and I want to go through these drills. We have in previously, if you'll face me, we both start on outside guard. What I'm going to do to perform my first cut, he's not going to do anything. I'm going to win this. I'm going to threaten, keeping my hand up high, so I'm in high hanging outside guard, high hanging inside guard. Drop my elbow down so my forte is in front of me and do a cut one with a lunge and then return. Again. This way, he's just going to cover in inside guard this time. But not until I do my lunge because he's an experienced fencer. He knows there's no way I can hit him without doing any footwork. Don't move, I'm gonna check distance. Yes, sir. And there's my strike right there. He recognizes that. So now he's going to first defend against my cut one. And again. And one more time. But he doesn't need to be passive in this drill. Now, I'm going to do that same thing, and he's going to counter cut the inside of my wrist with a cut one. Ready? Ready. This first instance, I am going to do incorrectly. I just walk onto his blade, basically. Again. Now, when we're doing this, this cut, what I want you to focus on is Think of the forte of your blade as if it is a bulletproof vest. You're putting it in front of your sternum. Keeping your blade in front of your sternum the whole time to protect yourself. Except when I'm down here, of course, because my sword is low, so I return it. So again, and that's why we have to add footwork. A good way to think of attacking and defending with your sword. I am offensive with extension and I am defensive with contraction. So when I throw my attack, check and measure. That's a nice cut. Mm -hmm. Check and measure, I'm gonna go for your head. Okay. That's plenty of strike for the blow. So when I throw my attack, if I do it incorrectly because I don't keep the bulletproof vest in front of my sternum, he can counter cut into the wrist. If, however, I keep that bulletproof vest, my forte in front of my sternum, I can go over the top and still make the strike. Again. 
And what's important to remember with this is, again, right now he's being passive. But let's have him be aggressive and countercut my wrist in the action of my cut. So not at the end of my cut, but at the beginning of my cut. We know from right here, I cannot hit him without footwork. And if I just go straight into a thrust, even he's not doing anything, I'm not going to make it there because he's going to counter cut my wrist and that'll stop my blow or at least redirect it enough. And especially when he does it with footwork, there's no way I'm going to do it. Do it with a slip. Yes, sir. That's the end of my attack. So I need to get him to move if we're at the end, beginning of our action. I extend out towards him like I'm doing a thrust, drop my point down. Now, go ahead and just counter cut my wrist with footwork. Okay, stepping in? Uh, to the side. Because that's what he's going to do most likely. Let's do it again. Because I can't do my footwork yet because if I do that, go back to it again. Don't do anything with your sword, please. Lift your point up so I don't run onto it. Now I've moved all completely in the wrong order, and he's going to punish me for this. So I cannot move until I've already got my weapon in front of me. I can throw a quick cut, which is a harassing cut, and it will make him move, and it's a great way to do it. Go ahead and just defend. Okay. But then when he countercuts me, that's how I set up for my next action. That's not what we're talking about yet. I just want you to recognize that I do see these other options, but I have a specific drill in mind here. So now I'm going to do it. In, uh, I'm going to do all, everything right, but he's going to step to the side and countercut me. Step to the side and countercut. There we go. Do it again. You were a little bit late. Yep. Now there it is. So now this the reason I cut like this. Same thing into that blow. Do that again. You got to go for me. Yep. You're, you're drifting. Ready? Ready. And I've still got my blow. This time, what he's going to do is he's going to void so that my blow goes past and he's going to countercut my wrist as soon as I've passed his body. And you're going to be successful on this? Okay. Ready? Ready. There it is. You avoid with the lead foot. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Again? Mm -hmm. I was dropping too low. I was giving it to you. Let me do it correctly. Thank you, sir. That's why I want to have this up here. So that even if he slips... And he counter cuts, I have an action. So when we're doing these drills, when you're, let me change that. When you are practicing this as a solo drill, just be my target. I'm here. I'm going to extend my stirrup is right outside his silhouette. I roll my hand up around the forte, which is in front of my sternum. Continue it around. Keep the sternum in front of my body lunge to make my strike, but as soon as I leave his body, I'm already recovering. So again. That time I re return to high inside hanging guard. That's the next portion of our drill. So what I'd like you to do this time is wait for me to attack. Mm -hmm. I go past you. Countercut my wrist on the way out. Got it. Void your line. Um, countercut in your um, on your way out. Yeah. So as I'm here, you counter. That's my countercut time. Excellent. Ready? Ready. Do that again. And that's what we're targeting. One more time. Mm -hmm. Now, I added a slip to it, and this is our next portion of it. 
Again, mm -hmm. he gets out of the way. He countercuts me. I slip on my recovery with a return to guard or even into a lunge if I so choose. And I can get there. In. Now, we're going to alter it just slightly. He's going to countercut me after I am, have thrown it. Let me just, let, let me show you. I initiate. He countercuts me here because I'm out of place. My hand is outside my body. My wrist is in front of my sternum. I'm no longer protecting myself with my sword. Do it again. Ready? Mm -hmm. This is a common tactic to aim for that arm. One more time. There's the hit. Go ahead and do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's our next action. This time, I'm making sure to keep it in front of me. And following through. You'll notice I've got the rock in my foot, my legs as well. I threaten. He's out. <laughs> A little bit late on that. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. One more time. Okay. Good. I want you to do it to me now. Okay. So that's the yeah. threaten. There's the cut. Yep. Why did I cut you on the wrist? Because I actually placed my hand here as opposed to right. here. I came too late. Do it again. There it is. Good. Now get the rock in your leg. Okay. Ah, sorry. Good. Uh, you got the I hand dropped my low. hand again, yeah. It's very common to do this. Go ahead and give me a cut one at my wrist. Okay. Cut one. Full yeah. measure. Look how easy that is to hit. Do it again. Cut one. Same thing. No. You can't, can you? I, I really can't. You can do a two. Yeah, I can reach you with a two here, but I cannot reach you with a one which is something I understand. And so, because I understand this, I'm going to take advantage of it. You're going to do a cut two after I go past with my cut one. Okay. So you're going to be successful. Ready? Ready. So, no, not yet. So, okay. Um, as I you slip, as I come forward, retract your elbow. Mm -hmm. And there it is. Yes. Yep. You feel it? I feel that, yeah. Do it again. Yeah. Slip with your foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. One more time. Okay, good. Now, I just like that. So, what I'm going to do is I begin my same action. And I turn it into a cut two against him. I know that I have cut one closed off because I'm in the proper place. Do it again. And there's my action. Again, a little bit sooner, not faster, but sooner. Yes, sir. Ready? Yes, sir. Too late. Okay. Do it again. Now, a little bit too late there too. Okay. So when I'm going forward, you're retracting. There it is. Do you feel the difference on I that? I do feel the difference in that. Yes, sir. Good. Let's do that again. Good. Because I'm doing everything right for a mm -hmm. cut one. Again, same thing. No, I was too low that time. Do it again. There it is. Now I'm going to turn my cut one to a cut two. That puts my stirrup in the way. Let's switch rolls, switch sides. Checking measure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Good. And 
there we have it. Mm -hmm. So let's put on masks. Yes, sir. Checking measure. Counter cut my wrist, you're going to be successful. Okay. Too late. Yep. Ready? Ready. There it is, good. Do it again, you're going to be successful. Good. Then I turn it to a cut two. Again. Then I return to inside guard. Do it again. One more time. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to do it. Okay. Now you're going to do it. Okay. So as I come forward with the tip here, yeah, as I cut you, two yeah, is what I need to throw into that piece there. And did you see how that left your it did. Yeah, if I come form. in with that cut one, I'm exposed yeah. in this line here or this line here. Correct. So when I come forward, I need to... No, that's still a cut one. That's still a cut one. And this is why we have to drill uh -huh. this. Go ahead and just do it. I'm just going to be target. Yeah. Because it's here is where I need to be able to work. Do it again. Slow. Hold it. At this point, once you've hit this position here, you're going to go and face the camera. You get into your cut two, bring it in. Now pull your elbow down and back. Okay. Not too far because I don't want to retract and take away my measure. But when I throw that cut one to a cut two, see how I'm pulling my elbow down and back? I'm utilizing the curve of the saber to give me the slice that I want. Got it. Do it again. I'm just going to be target. Yeah. You feel the difference on that? Yeah. Do it again. And then do it again. When you do that Molina to return to inside guard, open up. Open up your pinky. Excellent. You feel the difference? That rolls much come more comfortably into position there yeah. and allows, actually, it feels to me, the elbow to come back right. into the line. And this easier. is an interesting point. Go ahead and face the camera. Do that again when I say hold, freeze. Okay. And hold. So now, come closer. Right up to the camera. Now you'll notice his pinky is open. Because when he completes the cut, he closes his pinky. Go ahead. Now, if he does his Molinay, but he keeps his pinky closed, go ahead, stop. Look at the torque on his arm here. Go back to, you just completed it. Now when you're going around, open your pinky. Now look at the change in his elbow and he's able to utilize his wrist because his pinky is open. Do it again, this time with a closed pinky. Okay. And then back up just a little bit so you don't hit the computer, but do the full sequence. Full sequence, yes, sir. How'd that feel? Very awkward. All right. Do it again, but this time with an open pinky. How'd that feel? And you return right back actually into the line, your desiring core, which is inside guard. Yep. Do it again. Hold. Where's your wrist? My wrist is forward. And no, your wrist is down below your eyes. Remember, you want to use your... I need to keep that higher, yep. To protect yourself. And do it again when I say hold freeze. Okay. Hold. Come back out here. So now he's in high outside guard. Go ahead and back up for me. He's in high outside guard, which means any threat is covered. If he was here in low outside guard, I can hit him. Uh, face me. Stay in low outside guard. I'm going to okay. hit you in the head. So we're in low outside guard. 
No problem, right? Yep. Now go to high uh, outside guard. It's a big difference. Very. Because now when he, go ahead and face the camera again. When he drop, brings his point to high inside hanging guard, stop, not too much. Then his hand comes down. His forte is still in front of his sternum. If he was in low hanging outside guard, low hanging inside guard, he has no protection over his sternum. And so the guard that you start in leads to the next action. And what we've talked about a lot here is the and then. Yep. Right? The guard you are in is going to affect the placement of your blade in the next action. And if you're not aware of that, and the target is cutting back, you are in danger. Because you are not um, creating that, um, your armor Correct. before you in that position. Correct. Right. There's a reason that modern military shoots square on now. Right? Why is that? Because that puts the uh, greatest protection of your uh, plate in front of them. Whereas we used to dueling profile. Why? Because it created a smaller profile to be able to shoot. So now when I'm doing these actions and I'm here, I can move forward behind my blade because I'm covered. Whereas if I'm here, I'm no longer covered as I move forward. So what I want you to do is I want you to hit me in the head. Okay. We'll cut one and cut two, sir. Uh, one, two, or seven. I guess so. Doesn't really matter because you're gonna hit. You're gonna hit me. Well, no, no, no. Let me launch the target. I'm gonna launch the attack, and you're just gonna hit me in the head. Okay. Ready? Ready. Good. Do it again. Good. Do it again. Good. In each one of those instances, I got hit because when I was moving forward, I didn't have my bulletproof vest in front of me. Same thing. Okay. Again. Now I'm starting up high enough. Oops, sorry. <laughs> that I can get it. And I don't know what, throw, what cut he's going to throw. Does it matter to me? No. Because you have your bulletproof vest in position, you're guarded. Yeah. Even if I come around to a cut two here, you're still in that position. And I can easily protect it. Now, I need to, this is going to be the next portion of our solo drill. I need to be able to protect myself, but rechamber for my next action. So we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to do a parade. There's my two with a slip into my parade seven. Do it again. Again. So I lean forward. He slips. Again. One more time. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing now is I'm inviting him to countercut my wrist. Please remember, this is only one of many options, but I want to give you a solo drill that you can work on at home. First solo drill. We can pick up that. First solo drill. Out for my cut, keep it up high. Outside guard, extend, high hanging outside guard, high hanging inside guard. I'm going towards inside guard. As I strike, recover. Then we have cut two. I begin everything the same. Return to inside guard. Again, out. Now I pull my elbow down and recover to inside guard. Again, 
outside guard. Then we do that with a slip. Out, high hanging inside guard, high hanging in, or outside guard, high hanging inside guard. Slip, counter cut, or strike his sword, cut seven to the head, back to outside guard. Again, thrust, or extend the point, high hanging outside guard, high hanging inside guard, cover with a slip, parade with a seven, recover to outside guard. And those are the solo drills I want you to work on. With that, we're gonna call it a day. So John, please tell us what you learned today. Um, so, <clears throat> One thing is this is uh, the first time I've really worked a lot with curved blades. I've done, not done, I've worked with straight blades a lot. Um, and what it really emphasizes, because the only difference between the curved blade and the straight blade is the curve. <laughs> That's literally it. But it emphasizes stronger in a way the importance of, of that solid position of your hand and what's going to lead to that hand actually, which is um, if we go to grappling, you've heard in our grappling classes, if not, please check those out. We manipulate the wrist to manipulate the elbow. So if we manipulate the elbow while we're initiating something, it's changing our wrist. Yes, it is. Now it's different there if I'm working my way up on somebody, but I can work my way down to initiate something on my own body. And this is really what was emphasized today for me. Good. Good. And so one of the things that will help you get used to movement, it will be slightly different because of the curve, but one of the things that will help you in movement is the side sword classes that we have. Practice these drills. Go through them. Do them over and over again. Remember, practice makes Permanent. Permanent. Perfect practice makes perfect. So it's not just doing the drills. It's doing the drills slowly and perfectly so your body gets used to it. And that means that you no longer have to think about the level of your hand, which means your fingers and your wrist are significantly safer. And that's our goal with these cuts because when you're cutting a target, it can cut back. You need to be able to have a good defense built into your offense. And with that, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll see you on the other side. All the best to you and yours. Thanks for being here. Boom. Take care, everyone. Good to see you. You feel that flow?